Hey guys, welcome back to another wonderful edition of Whip Finish Wednesday. It is Wednesday night, and we've got a fantastic show for you planned this evening. Good day, Ken. Mike's going after crappies tomorrow. And uh, I think I saw Jimmy say he was going to go after smallies this weekend, I hope. Hello, Swamp Fox and Bill Brashears. Good to see you hopping on. It's awesome to see everyone jumping in tonight. We've got a fabulous show planned for you. And um, we've been talking with the guys over at Snake River Fly, Larry and Brandon, and we're excited about meeting them in person here in a few weeks. Howdy, Truman. Um, <clears throat> and we're, you know, always trying to get uh, local knowledge um, local knowledge whenever we're traveling somewhere new. So we're leaning on them today. And I, um, I was, Swamp Fox is going smallmouth fishing as well. And this is a fly that here in Kingsport where the South Holson runs through Kingsport, this fly I think would be deadly on smallmouth. So everyone who's talking about fishing for smallmouth, um, you ought to give this one a give this one a spin. And Gary has suggested this one as well for trout and smallmouth up in his neck of the woods. So this is what this is we're going to start off tying. And this is the hollow perch. Now you can change it. Uh, you can tie it in a myriad of different colors. Um, but here it is <clears throat> in loaded in the vise. It's tied on a size two uh, streamer hook. And Nan caught a few smallmouth bass with an articulated streamer. Princess Lexi last night. Good job, Nan. Steve's got a 12-pack and a dozen donuts or a pizza work at any fly shop. Yep. Ra Good evening, Randy. Um, so we just had a few of you all that posted because we're kind of all over the place. Oh, let's go live on the old Instagram. Um, we were just... Um, we're all over the place last week, tied three totally different patterns. Uh, Jimmy uh, Roop, I believe, has uh, tied all three and posted them. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Katie because she's already uh, she's already got them loaded up, ready to go. So, Katie, let's talk about these. Hey, so that's Jimmy's that you're seeing up there right now. Um, looking good. And like John said, he tied all three of those flies that we did last week and they look pretty fantastic so way to go jimmy um and this is billy bugs flies oh, bill brashears looking good i really like that color and the bead looks awesome with that and then uh ken b from down under sent us a really cool picture um and it's got tons of flies in it. It looks like at first I thought that kind of looks like shelves with toys on it. Almost like here's your toys guys go play. So I, I kind of took his picture and can, I hope this was okay. I, I split it in half so you could get a good, better look at um, the two different types that he did um, from what we tied last week. And then in the bottom corner, you can see the third type right there. So awesome job guys i am loving the flies and so happy that you all share them with us on instagram yay love it John? yes ma'am and steve is correct that looked like an infestation and fisher's flies howie that was the fly uh that we tied that was out of the smitty's fly box and it was the Come on, someone help me out with the name of it. It's not the a water walker. It's a um, fill in the blank stone fly. I've got the box sitting around here somewhere. A purple but sparkle. Purple sparkle wing. thing. It was yeah. something like that. Um, I can't remember. The Gary name knows of it. a fluttering stone. Fluttering Thank you, Gary. Stone. See, Gary was. He came attention. to the rescue. Thank you, Randy. Oh, see, and Mike he knew and, it. So sure. there we go. Fluttering stone fly. That was cor that's correct. Fluttering stone. Um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Jimmy, and um, and Truman. I tell you what, we're all wondering about you if you've forgotten how to tie. Um, but uh, we're we're also all very jealous that you and Chris got to go fishing on Chris's birthday. That's pretty cool. That's fun. Um, <clears throat> all right, so. Thank you for showing off those flies that were sent in. And um, guys, 
we always encourage everyone to do the best they can. Oh, and if you're watching over on Instagram, good Lord Trout, good good day Trout Lore. We've got one of your Australian buddies over on YouTube. You ought to come over and say hello. We're live over there. Um, totally forgot what I, was, what I was saying though. Instagram messed me up. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take this hook out of the vice here. Like I said, this will be a great one for. Um, uh, small mouth here. Uh, this will be the first time I've caught a trout on one like this. If we catch one, catch a trout here in the next little bit. Um, so let's probably don't really need to clean my glasses off because I probably don't really need my glasses on this big old hook, but why not? Let's get it going. So, um, the thread is six aught fluorescent orange thread. This is just the classic wax thread, nothing fancy. I'm just going to start right at the right behind the eye of the hook and do some open spiral wraps all the way down until we get to the rear. I'm going to wait to put the eyes on. And on this particular hook, I like going to cut this off. I like going to um, just in between the hook and the barb, the point in the barb, right about there. Uh, and that's where I'm going to build a ball because that's right where this particular hook starts to go down a little bit. And I want to build a, a little propping ball here that's going to help my materials play out. So, the um, Josh, this is, I'm, I'm really not familiar with it, this hook. This is a Masu, um, here you go, Masu Streamer Model B1 um, in a size two. The uh, the the A-Rex Clouser would be a fine hook. Um, they they've tied it on. I can't think of the name of it. Just a standard um, uh, streamer hook would be fine. Um, nice little nice long shank. Um, <clears throat> don't get too caught up in the hook. the The thing to get caught up on is the main material of this fly. And I'll go over it with you in just a second. So I'm trying to get a pretty good sized ball. Pretty much want to get it until the thread starts falling off of itself, just like it just did. And I'll work my thread back up. So now I've got that little ball there ready to go. <clears throat> and Mike, you're right. This is, for me, this is a very, very big hook. Um, so the main material we're going to use on this, and the cool material is Crinkles On. Um, if you haven't, haven't used it, haven't seen it, uh, now you've at least seen it, and it's kind of like ice dub. It's a very, very similar to ripple ice fiber, um, and uh, it's just a it's it's a long, uh, shiny fiber that has a crinkle to it. Hence the name crinkles on. Comes in a myriad of different colors, um, and uh, Mike Michael, this is <laughs> believe it or not, this is going to be for smallmouth and for trout trout. And for the old trout, and it's good. It's good you dropped on there, dropped on here, Michael. And do we mention the code? Um, not yet. Okay. Um, I pinned it to the top. I'll show you, Steve. So the, this one um, has got a. Make sure the thing's on. I need to charge my thing. This doesn't have a, a huge. This one's not a, a UV color here. Uh, the. Neither is a peacock. A little bit. See a, a little bit of reflection there. Uh, I want to make the assumption they do have some UV colors. Um, <clears throat> but just because I got the question earlier, it was, um, oh gosh, our buddy that we went to the um, Filipino place at the fly fishing show. What was his name, honey? J Anyway, Jason, Jason, that's right. Jason asked uh, earlier today what difference between ripple ice fiber and this. And we had Vietnamese food and it was yum. Vietnamese, Vietnamese that's right. Switch over to the side view here, the time desk, please. Okay, so here's ripple ice fiber. It is very similar when you look at the two. Um, when you pull them out, the uh, the crinkles on is a little bit longer. So that's going to allow you to, uh, you can see the package even is a little bit longer, but um, the similarities are so similar, but the main difference, and this is why I really like the, the crinkles on, see how the, the fibers for the most part are lined up straight. So these are a lot easier to grab and pull out. And I've even been shoving fibers back in here 
and these are kind of crammed down in here a little bit more so they're more you know just kind of a more like dubbing um but there are two very similar materials um when i asked snake river fly the main differences between these two uh two products um they said that they're the material is a little bit thicker so that would make it more durable um the the snake river fly crinkles on is a little bit more durable um well i'm glad you got a wednesday off michael um yes yeah, steve the the fibers are uh they said they're a touch longer the bag is longer which which is so silly as the bag being longer it means that the fibers aren't balled up in there so they're easier to take out but they said the fibers are longer and they said the fibers are thicker which makes them uh makes it more durable um probably a pretty pretty minor difference but how it's packaged is is a big difference so um with that said what does it look like under uv i already showed that okay um with that said the um thank you for the questions um so gary's fished it a bunch he says it holds up really well that was a complaint that uh that a couple people said about the ripple ice fiber earlier today um she is nan nan is right katie is killing it keeping me on track and everything thanks um, guys and if you're I'm watching super on excited Instagram, because come I, over and watch this on YouTube. We'd love to have you over there. You can see a lot better, and I'll chat with you a little bit more. I am super excited because our oldest is graduating from high school tomorrow. Yes. Yay. Exciting. Exciting times. And Katie's doing really good with the transitions now. Thank you for well. sharing, Katie. Oh, no problem. Anytime. <laughs> um, what other questions about this stuff? Oh, so here's here's the cool thing. These these are four bucks a piece, three ninety nine. And, you know, we usually give give a twenty five dollar gift card, or we give different things away. And uh, between now and Monday, for you guys, um, they're going to run a buy one get one free deal for the uh, for the crinkles on. So regular four bucks, it's half price. Um, so that's that's really cheap if if you um. If you don't have the crinkles on, can't beat that that price. So, um, Jeff, you've missed it all, man. Struggling. I haven't broke my thread yet, so that's that's a good thing, and I've started it. Um, the biggest thing with the Crelex Glen is this has got a kink to it. So, as opposed to being a straight fiber, it's got a kink. So it it it's curved. Um, it's straight but curved. So go to the hook. See if you can see it. Please, Katie. There we go. So you see how the, the fiber is kind of kinky? Um, so that's going to allow for more vibrations, more turbulence in the water just going through. It allows for better sculpting. I don't know if that's true, better sculpting, but better light reflection refraction ref refraction. Um or something. But, yeah, or something. So you see how it's not a straight material, it's kind of a kink material. Um, Katie's nailing it on the transition, that's for sure. And this has got a really cool little shine to it on the camera. So um, so I really like it. Katie's, I believe she's pinned at the top. The code is, is it Crinkles On 23? Yeah, it's it's Crinkles On 23. So Katie's put the code on there. You can just log in and, and order this half price or buy one, get one free. If the coupon doesn't work, you can reach out to them or reach out to us and just tell us what's going on with it. Is that a picture of what you're using? Yep. Okay. Thank you. I want to give credit to Snake River Fly Shop for letting me borrow a picture off of your website. I want to be sure that everybody knows that that was theirs. And it is solely for purposes of showing you all what the crinkles on looks like. Absolutely. So Thank head you. over head over to their website. Buy one, get one. BOGO. And once again on Instagram, come over and check us out on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you have not followed uh, us, please do. We want, we'd love to have you subscribe. Sorry. That's what you're supposed to say. Subscribe. So I'm going to grab uh, the a pinch of fibers, grab by the bottom and pull up. So you can see how they're, they're lined up nice and straight. Now where I've been not using the whole clump and I'm shoving them back in there, I'm kind of messing them up a little bit, but that's okay. So I've got a little pinch here and um, I'll try to get it, get them together Let's see, is that going to be good? Maybe a touch more. And 
There we go. So we don't need a, a whole bunch of this material. So all, all we're going to do is we're going to set this on the hook, roughly the halfway point, roughly. Set it like so. Bob D. Oh, I've made the move to YouTube. Wow, the Instagram kids are getting left behind. And Katie's camera directions. Thank you, Rob. We've got a new uh, person watching. It is a lot more fun on YouTube. You're absolutely correct. You can see better. You can hear better. And you can see Katie's interactions. Katie, can you say hello to Rob? Hi, Rob. <laughs> All right. So what I did is I, I grabbed my material and I pushed it down. Or... Hi. <laughs> Glad you're um, here. I push it down around the hook shank. So I'm not trying to tie it on top like this. I'm actually taking it. I'm kind of having to envelop the, the hook shank here. I'm going to put kind of a loose wrap around and then a tighter wrap, pull tight. So now we've got this kind of go, going out. It's going to hit that little, little bump right there. And now I'm going to work my thread back, back up. And you can use your fingers if you want to. This is why I didn't tie my, my eyes on yet. Um, you can use your fingers if you want to. Or my, oh, Rob from Trout Lore. Okay, sorry. That's our, so if Ken B is still on here, Rob, you'll have to uh, say hello to Ken. He is from, he's our Australian buddy that watches every week and uh, ties, um, he emails us his flies because he's not on Instagram. So I'm going to take my little uh, pen here shove it back like this, pull everything back, bring my thread forward. So if I wanted to give this extra body, I could just leave it kind of like that, or I can see how it's kind of flaring back, back up, or I can put a couple little wraps right on top. But you can see now we've got We've got a nice taper back here. See how that's tapered really well? It's got a little volume from the just the way it was tied in where it goes all the way around the hook shank. And we've got the little ball that's kind of supporting that fiber out a little bit. But all we've done is tie a tail in. It's really simple with this material that's got a lot of flash to it. Um, really, really easy. And, and I think you can see the, the end of it there. See how it's got a good taper in it. No need to trim it. No need to do anything with it at all. The kink holds it. Yeah, it really does. I mean, I'm, I'm, you'll see when I mix it, it'll uh, it'll really hold its shape well. Okay, so the next material I'm going to use is going to be this hydro hackle, which um, there's a lot of things you could switch out with this, but uh, this is what they suggested that I use. So I'm going to... Oh, yeah, I'll go and tie it in with a... So get this tied in all the way up. Well, all the way up, not really. And right back, I'll work my thread forward. And now I'm gonna tie my eyes in. So here's the, uh, I will say this is a trick. It's not a trick. Matt Bennett, I always had a problem um, uh, tying eyes in, using glue, not using glue, trying to figure out the best way so they wouldn't um, so they wouldn't move. And the reality is I don't care what kind of eyes they are, how you put them in there. If you crank on them or you bang them just right or you do something with them, they will, um, they're going to uh, break loose. Um, so this is how I've, I've, I tie my eyes in uh, and I've, advise you or suggest you do the same thing. So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> first of all, I'm going to set them kind of where I want them and hold them at an angle Let's get, so you can see it. So I'm, see the, the eye, oh. see how it's held at an angle right there? Now I'm just going to put uh, between eight and 10, but count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go nine. And so now you can see how there, it's right there at an angle, right? And I'm going to move it, bring my thread over, and with each wrap, I'm pulling tighter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine. So you see how that um, straightened it out. So the first nine wraps were tight. And then when I pulled it back, that's tightening up those wraps even more. And I'm going to go around and do, well, I don't know what, that's, I've heard a bunch of different terms for that. Collaring wraps, I don't know. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll do 10 this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Flip it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm trying to remember the name of the pattern that we tied, I don't know, four or five years ago. That was Matt Bennett's on the show. Um, and he he just kind of walked me through doing it this way. And it's just it's a ton easier doing it this way. And these um these wraps here are really what what keeps it from spinning. And if you want to, you can do the um, yoke wraps like this. I'm really overdoing it now, but just make sure you go around whatever type of wrap you do, go around. And now you're good. So we've got our, our eyes locked in there and that might be just a touch too far forward. Maybe half an eye length back would have been better. So it is a little bit far forward, but I'm not going to redo it. It'll be just fine. So I'm going to take my uh, the lunch money. That's it, Truman. That was it. So I'm going to take my hydro hackle, wrap it. I'm going to do touching wraps. And I've left it in the package, which makes it just a shade harder to tie with, but makes it where I'm not wasting any. I put a wrap or two, I pull really tight, bring it around, pull everything back. And I'm just slowly, that noise you hear is the, the packaging going back and forth. So I'm gonna grab here and pull tight, kind of sets everything. And this uh, hydro hackle, the color is Atomic Cutty. But I wish the uh, the deal on the Kringle's on was still going on in a couple of weeks when we're there because I'd like to order. I'd like to be nice and say a few more colors, but probably just all the colors. Now, when I get now, I got one one layer going up. Now I want to start these last couple wraps. I'm gonna kind of over overlap them just a pinch because I feel like. That's going to give me just a little bit of taper here. So there's one overlap, a second one, and that should be good. So we got that captured. And I'll pull this hydro hackle back, pull everything back. rid of this thing. Good grief. That one fiber. Gary? This guy is not... There we go. That was good. Okay. So now we've got our, our fly. Not done, but the main the body and the tail of the fly done so it's gonna be a nice light fly it's not gonna absorb hold a lot of water in it um you order by the gallon bags fly looks amazing let's go back well ken did you see um uh trout lore on here ken fellow australian um thanks for hopping on ken we really appreciate it um so just for that, I'm going to run my scissors too, make sure there's nothing that's totally out of whack. All right, so we're going back to our yellow um, crinkles on. And Gary, I'm going to let you pick the top color, whether you think I should do gold for the top color or peacock for the top color. I already did one that was peacock, uh, and I think the gold might be pretty good, but I don't know. So I'm going to take my uh, little pinch here, hold it, hold it by the bottom of the bag, pull up. See, I mean, look, look how straight that is. The nice. I'll, pit, I'll kind of measure, feel a little bit more than I had on the tail, but not much. Hey, Ken, thanks again for your picture that you shared. Yeah, Ken, we really appreciate it. Really, really, really appreciate it. 
Um, Gary, you said yes to gold or peacock is the top. So what I want to do now, let's switch back over to the device. The um, what I want to do now is I'm going to look at the, um, the length. And Katie, we switch back over to the device. Mm -hmm. Poor Faber. All right. <clears throat> so what I don't want to do is have the, the tips here. I don't want them to be lined up perfectly here. I want to work on this taper. So I've got the tips roughly to where my fingers are. Here's where the tip it, where the end of the tail is. Maybe a little further, about like that. So I want to kind of go about like that. So I'm, I've got my taper going on. I'm going to grab a particular website, but they have yet to. They have yet to oh, well, good, Ken. It's, I don't know how local that is for you. That might be like us going to um, can, uh, Canada or something. I don't know. So I've got, a, I've got one wrap here and another wrap. I'm just going to give this a quick pull to make sure that it's sitting on top of the hook. Pull tight. I'll look down on it. Make sure it's looking okay. Looks good. Third locking wrap. Pull this back. Bring this forward. Okay. Now we take this, pull this forward, and we'll put another wrap. Hold this on the top of the hook. See how I've got my material in my, my right hand? And now we'll do one more wrap. And now I want to hold the material up. Make sure I got all of it. See, I'm not saying this stuff's like the bomb durable. You can't break it, but because you can, but it's pretty durable. And I'm going to pull down. Now that's sitting on top of the hook shank. Pull tight. And I'm going to bring it forward probably about half the distance between um, the eyes and the, the dumbbell eyes and the, um, the hook eye. Now I'm going to pull this back. Fold it on top of itself. I'm going to look at my length. So you see how that's kind of, it's a little shorter. Well, so we've got kind of a stair step here. If I want to, I could trim that just a little bit more, but I think I'm going to leave it just like that. See how it's it's kind of this length, this length, and that length. Now this is the underside of it, and that's exactly that's pretty much exactly what we want. And if I could give you one piece of advice, well, I probably can't because I'll be too whatever. But another piece of advice is when you tie these, use less material than you think you need. Because when I look at the screen as I'm tying this, it looks much fuller than it does in IRL. Michael, what do you mean, what did you miss? The biggest thing is, is uh, get you some of this crinkles on. That's what you missed. We've been talking about it for about 20 minutes. Um, so this part here, I, I probably fish okay like that, but I, I want to kind of push this down. So as opposed to bringing my thread back to here, let's get my pointer out. As opposed to bringing my thread back to here and just putting wraps in and, and really locking that back down there, I'm just going to take my thread, hold this up. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to cross this over. I'm going to bring it. Let me sure I get it over the right way. Like that. And now I'm going to put a wrap here. And now I'm going to come back around like this. So you see how I didn't lock it down right here. I just put a, uh, an X wrap. Kind of in the on the front of the hook eye right here, or on the front of those dumbbell eyes like that. So I'll do it again just so you can see. So we go around, up, down. Okay. So now we've got the whole bottom of the fly done. And now here's where I need to figure out if Gary said peacock or gold. <clears throat> All right. So now I'm gonna work my thread up, and I want to make sure that I'm kind of covering up this little that little bit of gold that's showing through just because I'm not going to be able to come back here and tie any more, much anymore. All right. So let's go ahead and put a little layer of thread all up to the eye. Now we're good. Well, let's go with, um, we'll go with the peacock since he's not, he probably gave me the answer. I just don't remember what it was, or I didn't see what it was. So we're going to go with the, the peacock crinkles on. We're going to go with just a little bit more than we did at the bottom. So 
I'm definitely need more than that. So I'm just pulling out when I think it's enough. Maybe just a touch more. Now when I'm when I'm not tying live, I'm like picking up each individual fiber and putting it back in, like kind of like finding free money. I'm sure I'm the only one that does that. Okay. So now we've got our our um our peacock crinkles on here. And I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of did the the pass, so the the back. I'm I'm measuring my my length. So I've got this nice little stair step, but this is gonna be the the top of the fly. It's gonna be the over wing. This is gonna be however you want to call it. And I want this to go back pretty far. So I'm just kind of measuring to about there. So bring this back over, set it here. Put a couple wraps in. Make sure it's on the top of the hook shank. We'll bring our there we go. Bring the thread forward just a bit. I want to look and make sure that we're distance wise, we're looking okay. And you guys are watching on Instagram. We're over on uh, YouTube, and you can see quite a bit. Actually, I'll probably zoom in for you guys. You can see quite a bit better if you'll uh, come over on YouTube and watch. All right, so we've got this locked in. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take take uh, my fingers, pull this back pull like that. So we've got a nice little clean part of the head, clean place to tie it off. Now the thread probably will slip here in just a second. If it doesn't, it's okay. So you see how it's slipped there. I just want to clean it up a little bit. So we've got everything we want. I'm just trying to build up a little bit of, right now these threads have gone back. I'm trying to connect the under piece there. And let's uncord our thread just a bit. It's kind of looking a little messy. And all I want to do is cover up that. There we go. Okay. So we've got our, <clears throat> our head done. Everything's looking good. So now it's just time to wet finish. And we'll be good. Flip her around. Once again, while I'm wet fishing, if you uh, if you're watching on Instagram, hop, come over and hop over. We've got a handful of people. We've got a good little group over on YouTube watching. Love to see you hop on over there. So there we go. So now we've got our our fly just about done. I'm gonna pull this back, and you see how we've got it all going. Now, here's one thing that Larry was was telling me. Uh, over at at, um, at uh, Snake River Fly, so you can see I've I've got a good taper. If I don't need to right now, but if I wanted to trim some, I could. I can see a fiber here that like Gary would probably trim that fiber off right here, that one. Um, but once it gets wet, it's going to be fine. But as opposed to trimming, if you'll just take this and literally just roll it. See, I'm rolling this completely around on itself. Just roll it up. And that's, <clears throat> I mean, I just kind of go the wrong way, but that is what, what we want it to look like right there. So that's a good little shape. I'm going to do one more thing, and this fly will be done. Look at that way he whip finished. Yeah, look at the he whip finished on a Wednesday. Of course, went off forward in the back. I've, I've seen Larry whip finish. I think on the one that he did, he, he put 17 on one, 17 whip finishes on one whip finish. Um, and I'm not going to talk to that. <laughs> I think that is a little bit um, overkill, in my opinion. So we go down. The uh, another nice thing about the crinkle on is it does take marker really good. So I'll flip this around. This is not my best marker job in the world.
Oh goodness, I can't even see it now. Okay. So there we go. And I'll give another little thing. Mike, sorry I'm late. Was, I was catching fish. Well, that is a good, we will, that is the one excuse that works for sure. So all of y'all are talking about smallmouth fishing. Might just take this and trim just the very bottom, of the back of that off. All y'all talking about smallmouth fishing. This was chartreuse and white or char, just a good chartreuse and, um, and even yellow. Would, would be really good. This color combo would probably be fine. Um, but it's going to shed water really well because none of this, except for maybe a little bit of the hydro hackle, it's not absorbing water. So so when you're casting, it'll shed the vast majority of the water. Um, that's just a really, really cool fly um, that will get eight up. And here's my last, last step. So I'll just put a little... And on the ones we posted today, I put two coats on here because most of the time when I'm fishing clousers, uh, I'm tying a bunch for salt water. And when I'm dragging a clouser through the sand, this bottom part always gets eaten up. And Sally Hansen's two coats to three coats of Sally Hansen's let it absorb until it won't absorb anymore. Um, that's the best that that holds up really well. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. There's our hollow purse. Was that long cut hydro, hydro hackle? hackle? Was that long cut? Are you talking about like, is it like Copenhagen? Is it straight, long cut, short cut? Is this a chewing tobacco joke? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't uh, think it's hydro hackle. Yeah, this is this, the orange stuff is hydro hackle. Oh, okay. And it's and the color is atomic cutty, Truman. It's it's got a it has a um, fibrous almost like a cottony feel to it. Put it um, in front of camera two for me, so I can see. Camera two, okay. So here here's the hydro hackle, okay. um, and it has like a cotton core. There's two lengths of hydro hackle, dude. Uh, Truman, you gotta be complicated, Truman. Truman, Truman. I think snake. Hey, Chris, over on Instagram. Uh, there you go, Snake River Fly. Truman, ask Snake River Fly uh, what length this is, because I do not know. Truman says there are two links, and he's questioning what length that one is. Yes. And we so, don't know. Okay, so extreme to string and snake fly is close. Um, cool. Well, maybe um, maybe if he want to know, right there they are. In Snake River Fly, we just finished tying your... Uh, the first fly, which is the hollow perch. Um, but we appreciate you coming down. Looks like it, it's very similar to Palmer Chanel. Um, just a different, a little bit different makeup. And those um, of you watching, don't forget to check out the pinned message. If you went ahead over to snakeriverfly.com and use the code CRINKLESON23, it's buy one, get one. Yep. Cool. So, Craigle's on some cool stuff. I'll, I definitely like that a lot. So, we're going to switch over to a big, fancy roach. stone fly. It's a roach. And I, should, when, I tied a couple of these uh, last night or a couple nights ago. I don't remember when it was now. And uh, I put it in Katie's said, Close your eyes. I put it in her hand and she might have jumped a little bit. It's a roach. Um, this thing is. Uh, for me, it's a it's a giant stone fly. So this is what this is what we're going to tie right here. But it looks roachy. It does. It looks like it, it even it, has it, on the bottom. It even has the roach goo coming out, like when you step on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's soft when it gets wet. It's going to Brandon here. Good looking. Or bugs. thanks, Brandon. Or palmetto bugs, as Ooh, the palm South Carolinians call them. Palmetto bugs, exactly. Yeah, and I'm like, no, that's a roach. That's a big roach. So, hey, Brandon, we had a question about the hydro hackle. Is this the long or the short hydro hackle that we use? This, um, you want to put it in two? Yep, this right here. And he might be, he's probably still working and, um, he's probably got it going on in the background. If he doesn't answer, anyways, he's work. They're not, it's not nine o'clock over there. 
Um, so this is what we're going to tie. This is their water wick stone. Um, also, both the for your state. The hydrohackle standard length. The long cut is double the length. Perfect. Exactly what we needed to hear. There you go, Truman. Now you've got your answer. Um, so here we go. Let's get the, let's get this one going. This one is you know when I'm tying stones here, this is a little bit different. Just a teeny bit. Number one, we're going to start off with number eight, and this is for this fly probably on the small end. Uh, I would say you tie this in size four to eight, um, which is for us giant. I'm going to use a 5.5 millimeter blast, blast, blast B. Swamp Fox from South Carolina, Palmetto Bug is definitely, yeah, Swamp Fox. We, mm -hmm. We're familiar with the Paul Rowley called Palmetto Bugs just because I've got to be different. Okay. So we've got a 5.5 millimeter um, brass bead on here. And I'm going to go with the, with rust color six dot, sorry, a dot. Here we go. We'll use the, the rust a dot uh, class of wax thread. Pull my bead over. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some switch back over to the vise, honey. I'm gonna just pull the bead out of the way, just start my thread. And oh look at Steve Yates using the scientific name. Superfly wax is the best in it is. It sure is. It's pretty good. You pretty know, good stuff. I, I used to and I kind of cheated, felt like. Um, but I, I used to um use nothing but nano silk. Like we've been doing this show for five years. I'd say there was a year or two, maybe longer than five years now, but there's a year or two that we um um probably just use nano silk. And uh you kind of get spoiled with it. But I mean they both have got their place. Uh yeah nano you can't break nano silk and it's super strong and it's it's nice. It's good stuff. But I I probably haven't used nano silk now and nano silk and in quite a while because the uh, the, the classic wax, wax thread is has just right amount of grip to it and i really like the grip so i've got some uh some of these legs here now you can use a lot of different kinds are there their laser legs and fall hopper um you could use a lot of silicone legs um just grab some legs or if you don't have have them this color grab some here with your order of uh um crinkles on so I took one leg, fold it in half, and I cut it in half. So this is one leg times two, or divided by two. There you go. One leg divided by two. Yes, Brandon, the new merch is going to be the shiz. So Kent, when Ken B sent us um, his flies, I guess we can talk, we can be proper and talk about him since he's gone now. Um, he's working. He, he he's like I tried to do the best I could, but um this is this is what I had on hand and we're like oh it looks great and he's like oh by the way what does MSU stand for and we're like well let's just say you did perfect <laughs> you, you used what you had and it worked out great so you see I've got this the the legs just tied in the front coming out either side of the the hook eye and we want to don't the speed's so big and the the lead we're going to use is so thick. It's you don't have to be like super cautious, but we're going to do it like that so you can see how it kind of keeps it split. Same, is that right? There we go. Love their laser legs. See, Bill. Now I'm going to get my 035 wire. So one of the things I, I go back and forth with lead and lead free, but. But, um, Gary was very specific when we were fishing in Montana. We to make sure we're using lead-free wire. So that is the main reason that um, that I'm bringing or I'm using the 035 lead-free wire. So those of you all haven't seen our video on wrapping wire, check it out. Um, but I wrap in the opposite direction. One, two, I think we'll put three or eight wraps on. Was it two, three, four, five, six? seven eight we'll make it nine 
knot. So regardless how thick the wire is, grab it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna helicopter it off. See that's 035 wire. It did fine. I'm gonna jam this forward. And I'll look at it and see if I do I want to wrap. I might put one more wrap right there. And that's fine. Jam forward. And of course, now I don't have enough to wiggle off. Just about enough. See, I got overzealous and overconfident and wrapped that additional wrap there. It messed me up. Okay, perfect. Jam this for now. Where this does have the bent shank, there will be a couple little gaps right here with your um, in your lead, and that's fine. So pretty heavy fly so far, right? As long as there's carp, we need to get Katie on a giant carp. I guarantee she would be. Let's look at her face right now, Katie. How excited are you about getting onto a giant carp? <laughs> we'll we'll uh yeah we'll we'll make it work it's just that i'm from tennessee and We've got carp it. aren't like i don't know they just are they're like the fish at the lakeside restaurant that like just sit there swarm and... under the dock and they sit there and people throw pellets at them and they're fat and they just flip and flop and they just like i don't know they gross me out but you know what? I'll try anything once. And you she'll know? love it. I'll try anything once for sure. She'll love it. I will try it. So right now I'm just taking some lighter wraps. I'm not trying to cover this lead. I'm just trying to put some uh, thread in these in the big gaps. So if when I tie my, um, my rubber legs in right here, it's not going to be a big deal. I don't like get caught all the way in there. I'm going to work my thread all the way back, and I'm going to bring it down the bend just a pinch to right about there. I'm going to bring it back up to here because that's where I'm going to tie my second. So I cut that one leg in half. Here's my other one. Man, there are a lot of colors on Hyder Hack. Yep. I think you said brass bead, John's not tungsten, so not too heavy yet. Well, it's not too heavy, but... Um, I don't ever use 035 wire, so for, and I don't ever tie size eight stone fly nymphs. So this thing weighs. This is like a streamer to me, Mike. For me, anyway. Bio old mirror. Fight like crazy. Um, all right. So we're gonna do the same thing. Pinch it. I'm I'm just lining up my tips. Just like this. And for those of y'all who might be watching on Instagram. Come over and check us out on YouTube. You'll be able to see better, he'll be hear better, and see Katie's wonderful expression talking about carp fishing. She's she is just pumped. She cannot wait. I mean, I'm really not against trying it, you know, everything at least one time. Give it a whirl. And you know, fishing is one of those things too. Like it can be totally different in another state or another area of the country. You know what I mean? It just kind of depends on where you are. I'm just saying, my only experience with carp is carp is greater than trout calhoun's on the river yeah. on fort loudon lake so you just kind of sit there and I'll that's hook. pretty much that's like extra all Truman, I appreciate the support yes thank you truman well i i asked them that they they um uh larry sent me a note today he's like hey would you like for us to put a uh a, a coupon code and i was like well sure what's it for like are you gonna is it gonna be you get an autograph from brandon like if you order with a certain time period or what's the coupon code for and um, I didn't get a response on that one. These are the carp at Calhoun's on the river. This is what they do. They like. Well, they've got like basically attack you. They've got. The gun, do they still have the gumball machines there? That yeah, have they the have gumball food? machines that will like you just feed them. Like people just. I mean, they just like. I don't even know how the fish can like come to the top surface of the water anymore. Really. Steve, Steve, I'm right there with you. I would love to. Um, I've, I've seen people sight fish for carp around here. It sounds awesome. I just haven't, uh, I, I got, um, I was smallmouth fish on the South Holston and I saw a bunch of carp and I let a clouser sit on the ground or sit on the, the river bottom. And I could see it and the, and a carp came and sucked it up and spit it right back out. So they're definitely, 
Well, in the right instances, they're not super easy to catch. I mean, if you want to sight fish for carp, <laughs> head on over to Calhoun's on the river. There you go. You can sight them all day long. You see them? You right see there. them? They're right there. <laughs> uh, let's switch over to camera two to the tying desk. So the material I just tied in is barbed, make sure I'm telling you, barbed elasticore black. So this is similar to the... Um, the hydro hackle but different it doesn't have it does have the cottony core but all the the hackle part of it is uh is synthetic um so now i'm wearing the wrong darn color shirt so you can see it's got a lot of like legginess that's what's going to give the bugginess to the um um to this fly so i just tie this in i'm gonna throw it over here on the side of my vice to keep it out of the way so now let's go to what this fly is named after, and that is a water wick. So water wick, this material is another corded material. It has, uh, let's go to the fly so you can see. It's extremely soft. It's going to soak up a lot of water. You can see you've got the cord. It kind of, it's kind of one dimensional or two dimensional, I guess. It's not round, it's more flat. So in a way, it's kind of like a micro hackle as we're wrapping it. But this is going to be the body and the wing case. So think pheasant tail nymph. This is a giant pheasant tail nymph. We're using this as the pheasant tail. This is our wire. And our thorax is going to be the same stuff, just in a, in butter color. Got it? That kind of simplifies the fly. It's a, we're tying a giant pheasant tail nymph with water wick in the place of pheasant tail. So just like a lot of materials, I can pull, pull it off. And this kind of makes a little bit of a mess, but I can expose that core. See, I got that core exposed. Tie that in. There we go. And you can just tie the whole material piece in. And guys, seriously, if if you're if you're thinking about um, this one's going to be kind of if you took the L out of that statement, you'd be spot on with this one because this one's going to be kind of fat. Uh, but it, it when it soaks up, this thing cut turns into like a jelly. So I'm I'm looking forward to fishing this. This is going to be this will be different. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the hydro hackle. Just going to bring it down, pull tight, bring this up. Pull back. So I guess I could have I could use my rotary function, make it a little bit easier, but I won't make it difficult. Pull this back. And I'm I am keeping this not super tight, but pretty tight. And we'll tie up to the base of the base of the lead. Maybe a touch past it. Just get up on the on the um, uh, make that transition so a little bit, little bit of a taper. But it's a good thing the the camera's not zoomed out that much because my bobbin are probably making everyone sick right now. They'd be, they'd all be like, "Oh my gosh, the thing's going 500 miles an hour." Okay, we'll call that good. So now I'm going to undo this. Bring my thread up. Capture. One, two, three. Keeping my, keeping this hand right here tight. Now I want to pull tight. Put a couple wraps in there. Now, now it's not going anywhere. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. So now I've got a long tag here, right? I'm going to take this, fold it right back over to make a loop. So all I'm doing is making a big fat loop right there. See that? Keep it kind of on the top of the hook shank so it's not totally wrapping all around. Now remember, we're pretending like we're tying a pheasant tail nymph. This is our pheasant tail. So I'm just bringing my... I'm checking my length here. There we go. 
So it looks good so far. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Stonefly been working out down here tasting. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't, this thing is giant, but it, um, oh, speaking of giant, there's Misha barking. Um, but when it gets wet, it, it, it turns into like a jelly looking thing. And when, when I put this in Katie's hand, I'm not joking. She thought I put a palmetto bug in her, in her hand. She thought it was a big cockroach or something. Bring this up, then it catches fish. Yep. I'd say so. So I'm going to try to pull off some more of the stuff to expose the core. So you see, I got my little core here. One more there. Now, if you notice, I'm leaving right behind this the, the bead. See how that's, you can still see the lead there. Here's my first real rapid thread right there. I'm leaving that open because I want to make sure that I've got plenty of room to tie everything down. And I'm going to wrap this the same way. Tighten this up. Okay, pull tight. See, we're getting with that lead, we're getting just a little bit. Oh, gosh darn. If someone is watching, they should have been like, dude, Gary, you haven't asked me what I forgot yet. So it's like a mop fly on Sarah with John. It kind of is. Kind of. Except not. But it is kind of like a mop fly on steroids. Um, if you can come over and watch us on YouTube, you'll see a lot, you'll be able to see a lot better anyway. And you might have said that comment a little while ago. So since you're watching if you're on side camera, I've got one leg. And what I want to have is six total legs, which would be three on one side and three on the other side. So I'm going to take, let's go back to that side camera. I'm going to take this and I'm going to look at it. They don't have to be absolutely exact, but taking one leg and making three separate pieces. You see how I did that? Just fold it back on itself and, and it's good. All right. So I'm going to take this and we're just going to figure eight it right here. Right in the middle. Make sure we got it even on both sides. Looks pretty much even. If something's not really behaving, this is basically the way I tie my. Um... Oh gosh, patch rubber legs now. Doing it like that, just tie tie all three legs just like that. And you're good. Move this up so nothing. I was waiting until you. Oh, I missed your. Oh, you, that was about the. Yeah, you probably would wait until I got the same tied on. Make a video of Katie's first carp. Did you hear that, Katie? Mm hmm. And we might get like tens of views on that, honey. Like tens. Tens. All right. So now I'm going to put two wraps behind. I'm going to bring this leg, see right here, bring it over here. One, two. See what we got going on so far. Two. So now I'm going to take my middle leg, pull it back. One. It doesn't really matter if you get them mixed up, which one's in front and which one's behind at this stage anyway. I would switch it back over to the, the hook. Sorry. There you go. So see how we got it. I'm going through. Now I'm going to put one more wrap here. I'm going to pull the front legs. Pull this back. And I'm going to make sure I've got everything pulled pretty tight. Pull this back and pull this up. So we'll do three wraps again. And I like tying my stuff, my materials off at the top because I'm uh, I'm going to be covering this up with my fancy wing case here in a minute. But you see how my, my legs are, the, my six legs, three on each side. Looking fine, right? Right, right, right. Now we got one last thing to do, one last thing to tie in, and that is our what's the fancy word for it 
<clears throat> our barbed elasticor. So we'll bring it around and we're just, like I said, pretend like this is our wire. And this will kind of shrink up the fly just a bit. Just open spiral wraps. We're not trying to counter wrap it or anything. We're not trying to give this more uh, durability or anything. We're just wrapping this around. Probably on this size eight, probably four wraps behind and maybe three wraps in front. Okay. There we go. Well, it'd be nice if my I really for the especially for this show, I probably should have I probably should be counter or using my, my rotary feature and I should have just cut off the material as opposed to trying to save the material and leave it in the bag. Okay. Same as we did before. I'm going to bring this material up and I'm going to capture it right here, right on top of the hook shank. We've got three. Pull tight, pull back. And we'll see, I can, I can feel that thread slipping behind that bead and that means it's perfect. All right, <clears throat> so can you all see that okay so far? Make sure legs are out of the way. My front and back legs are too long, but that's okay. Pull these little hackles down. Pull this forward. Make our wing case. And I'd say in this case, I might've made my, probably a little bit, the other ones I tied my, Thorax is a little bit small and I couldn't fit everything in there. I made this one maybe a touch big. Okay. Take this out. I'm telling you what, these random ed scissors, I wonder what hour night they dream is fly. <laughs> I don't know. My, um, yeah, my thorax is a little bit big, but. Um, these are intimate scissors. This is tough material to cut through, and these things just, well, it is butter. That's what it's called, butter. All right, so let's pull all this back, get another wrap or two in to make sure I'm not having any of the, I don't want to be messy after all. Okay, now we're ready for a wet finish. The manatees are always worried. This was literally... Perhaps a sunrise surf. So, I you know I'm, that's hard for me to. I don't, I don't wet finish very often. And you can be like me and break your leg off, like I just did, which is always a fun thing to do. It just makes it interesting. But I mean, it's a good thing that the fish don't count very often. So, if there is just one leg, Usually it's pulled out. It'll be okay. I don't think anyone's gonna care. Um, so there's we'll pretend like there's another leg there. So we'll pull it out, pull them to length, cut it to length like that. So now they both match. See this one and this one right here match. Do the same thing in the back. You can always add or yeah, you can always add more length. You can always cut more off. So careful how much you cut off. Um, and then my side legs look good just the way they are. So you see how it's kind of like that. So as you can see, we got lots of cripply, cripple, you yeah. know, that manatee sausage is good stuff. Yep. This is, uh, this something. So you can see the ones that we tied before, um, the, the thorax is a little bit, a little bit just a little bit shorter. So this is this one's more like 25%, 75%. And this one's actually, the way it's pushed back is more half and half. So maybe somewhere, I don't know, I want to push it forward, it looks a little bit better, but somewhere in between these two. Um, and that will, uh, 
that'd be fun. But I, like I said, I think the uh, the one leg in the front it's not going to kill it. I'm still going to fish it. So just because um, the shores are going to fish good, I'm going to put my Sally Hansen's resist applicator to just run a beat of caulk, man. Just a little bit. I don't want to absorb too much into the, the water weight material, but if it does, it's okay. I'm going to run a bead of caulk all the way around that thing. I want that absorb. And not that that's going to be bulletproof, but that should be fine. Just like that. That'll, that'll look... Um, to the right fish, as that's tumbling down the, the water, that will look uh, hopefully appetizing. I hope. What do you think, Katie? Looks good. Katie looks thinks it looks good. And, and so, or um, uh, Snake River Fly, since you're on here, um, should I tie one or two later on with the gold top and the yellow bottom, or should I stick with this color or go with gold bottom and the peacock top? What are some of your good, full, good color combinations for this crinkles on? Because um, I, I just, I really like this, this side. This is awesome. And that's, that's Snake River Fly, that is, or uh, uh, Brandon. There was a handful of people earlier, maybe three or four people, said they were going to go smallmouth fishing. And I can guarantee you within five minutes from from our house here, this could get eaten. I'm, I'm, if we weren't so busy. We got a graduation tomorrow, and then we're going out your way the following week. Um, but I'm going to fish this one in a different color combo. Um, I'm just going to get some more crinkles on. I like gold and yellow on sparkle minnows. Yep. I think gold and yellow. That's I think gold and yellow. I think yellow chartreuse would work really well for um for the smallmouth. Gave him the same answer. Yeah. <laughs> the exact same answer. I gave him which one should I do? His answer was yes. I think it turned out okay though. So guys, um, if you want to switch us back over. So one more time, uh, check out the code at the top of the, it's pinned to the top. I believe it's Crinkles, Crinkles on. on. 23. Thank you, Katie. Crinkles on 23. Go over to Snake River Fly and uh, you can get until Monday. That would be, I don't know what the date is on Monday, but the end of Ju the end of May, um, you can get buy one, get one free, which is half off, if I do my math right, uh, the Crinkles on. This is a cool material. Check it out. Um, we really appreciate everyone that's hopped on with us. And Ryan, good to see you on Instagram. I bet you're watching on YouTube. Anyone who's over there on YouTube or Instagram can watch on YouTube. Um, so the 29th, that is the 29th at midnight is when this code will turn off. So unfortunately, it will not be going on when we're over there, Katie. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, check them out. If you have any questions, shoot it to them. Or if you just want to get a somewhat sketchy answer, ask us. Um, we really appreciate everyone hanging out with us. We'll be back live next we next Wednesday night. Don't know what we're going to tie yet, but we will come up with something. And then uh, we're going to be hanging out with a bunch of cool fishy people for a few weeks. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who tied last week and has tied over the weeks. Uh, if you got some time and you don't have any, um, uh, you don't have the right materials. That's okay. Use what you got. Use hashtag Whip Finish Wednesday when you post your fly, and we'll, uh, Katie will share it next week. Um, if you don't, if you're not using Instagram, no problem. Just email it to us at demuthflyfishing at gmail.com. Um, don't take up with no local people and write if you find work. That's great. Guys, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We will talk to you later. Have a Katie. great weekend, everybody. See you later.